असतो मा सद्गमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओ शाते शाति शाति नमस्ते एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू द लास्ट सेशन ऑन मांडुक्य उपनिषद दिस बींग द शॉर्टेस्ट उपनिषद वी फिनिश्ड इट क्विकली एंड बट इट्स नॉट एज इजी एज दैट एज यू हैव सीन अवस्था थ्रे विचार रिक्वायर्स अ सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस सो एज टू फील वॉट द ट्रूथ ऑफ वॉट दे आर सेइंग एंड इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट प्रोमिनेंट टेक्निक्स ऑफ वेदांत विचार इन फैक्ट एज आई टोल्ड यू दिस वन टेक्निक इज इनफ टू गो इन टू द हार्ट ऑफ सेल्फ नॉलेज If it is conducted in the first person, and if we arrive at what they are saying, uh, if we arrive at the fact that we are the witness of the three states, and we are of the nature of pure awareness, consciousness, and we manifest as the waker, dreamer, and deep sleeper, and we are not identified with that. If we can manufacture that state, then this will become pretty obvious what Avastha Trivichar is telling us. Uh, today we will be continuing the omkar upasana we have two more mantras left and before i go into that see let me just tell you what state of mind does this all these upasanas and vidyas and inquiries which are what kind of a state do they produce uh, you can know it very well uh, from the gospel of sri ramakrishna once you know the the master was uh, sitting and narendra nath came and sat close to him hmm? and then uh, shri ram krishna suddenly said he turned to him and said he was just a young lad 18 19 years but just looking at him the master would go into samadhi so imagine his his level hmm? and uh, his face was his eyes were always indrawn he was an adept in meditation shri ram krishna used to call him dhyana siddha so on this particular day shri ram krishna looked at him and said Satchidananda is, is an ocean of bliss. Don't you want to dive into it? Then he said, "See, suppose there is a cup of syrup, and you are a fly. How would you drink that syrup?" And Narendra Nath said, "Why? I would sit in a at an edge of the cup, and I would stick out my head, so that I don't plunge into the syrup, but I can taste it." Then Sri Ram Krishna laughed and said, "Nare." <laughs> not like that because this is the this cup this syrup it is nothing but sachidanand it is the ocean of consciousness if you plunge into it you do not die you become immortal because it is consciousness if you plunge into consciousness you will only become fully conscious isn't it you won't lose consciousness you won't become unconscious elsewhere shri ram krishna has said this chaitanya ke chinta kore ki achaitanya hai <laughs> thinking of consciousness can you become unconscious so this is that ocean plunging into which you will become immortal and then everyone there like this so much you see what a beautiful illustration it is of the nature of this realization any other knowledge object to knowledge yes you will have to sit at the edge of the cup and stick out your head to taste it but this knowledge you just have to plunge into it that is all because it is your own true being that is being investigated here in the scriptures this is very beautifully described as you know swarupa lakshana and tathastha lakshana these are the technical words used uh what they mean is obvious from the word swarupa is the real rupa the the real nature of the self tathastha is when you stand on the banks of something and try to interpret that thing uh, now suppose i tell you um, well what is the ocean like suppose i ask you uh, how do you uh, describe the ocean and you are standing on the beach and how would you describe the ocean it's something vast it stretches to the horizon and it's uh, blue and you may say all these things uh, it's beautiful but if you enter the waters How will you describe the ocean? Only one. How deep it is. You will describe it in terms of water, isn't it? The ocean is nothing but water. So that is the swarupa lakshana, 
एंड दिस इज द तटस्थ लक्षण इसका मतलब है तट पर रह के आप डिस्क्राइब कर रहे हो देर इज अ वास डिफरेंस बिटवीन बिटवीन द टू बिकॉज देन यू विल डिस्क्राइब द नेचर ऑफ द वॉटर सो वेन यू प्लंज इन टू मेडिटेशन समाधि यू विल अंडरस्टैंड द नेचर ऑफ ब्रह्मन अंटिल देन इट इज ओनली अ थर्ड पर्सन परस्पेक्टिव यू नो ऑल परसेप्शन ऑल्सो इज हैवीली मीडिएटेड नॉलेज इट कैनॉट गिव यू एन आइडिया ऑफ द थिंग इन इट सेल्फ ट्राई एज यू मे यू कैन ओनली नो इट बाई बींग इट दैट इज वाई अ टेक्निक अ मेडिटेशन मेथड बिकम्स इम्परेटिव बिकम्स एब्सोल्यूटली नेसेसरी टू अटेन दिस बिकॉज इट इज डिजोल्विंग कंप्लीटली इन टू योर कॉन्शियसनेस प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस सो आई रिमेंबर वेन आई वॉज इन केप टाउन टूडे मॉर्निंग वी वे टॉकिंग ऑफ केप टाउन दे आर दोज देर द टेबल माउंटेन एंड दोज टू ओशंस मीट नो इंडियन ओशन एंड एटलांटिक ओशन द वॉटर इज वेरी कोल्ड ऑलवेज extremely like stingingly cold if you just touch it it will take you some time to recover so when you actually stand on the beach <coughs> of the ocean the two oceans meet and it, it's you get a very good view from the table mountain actually in cape town and when you see it from the table mountain or you see it from the beach it looks like a green and blue mixing up somewhat they don't actually mix too much because indian ocean is warmer but whatever it is a beautiful sight it's a very philosophical moment to see it actually like that and from the beach also you are, you see it like that hmm it's it's the ocean stretching into the horizon that kind of a picture but you enter the ocean enter the waters and you will understand what it is and you can see those huge whales like ships you know <laughs> moving about there it was such a sight so you see entering the thing is something different especially this knowledge can only be entered into any conceptual uh, idea of it understanding of it will always be insufficient it will be in the third person and uh, it will be highly mediated so it is not a paroksha anubhuti paroksha anubhuti means heavily mediated knowledge you require a whole lot of things for that thing to become perceptible and that again is not the thing in itself because i told you when you perceive a thing even in terms of physics when you study it it is you are only seeing the light it is throwing out at you it's the rejected light it's not the light it is holding back so you are not perceiving it as it is you are perceiving it as per what your equipment can track and as much as it can hold only that much you are perceiving of reality about anything so always you remember the tatastha lakshana will be convoluted and the swarupa lakshana is the actual thing about consciousness so this di- distinction is made in our scriptures so that we we understand clearly paroksha anubhuti and aparoksha anubhuti are two different things an object can be perceived well the means to understand the object get knowledge of the object is paroksha anubhuti it is vritti based uh, it depends on so many uh, intervening factors like light the light the object throws out and uh, your ability to perceive it uh, only you within the can perceive light in the visible range other creatures cannot do that so to them it is something else suppose you had other faculties it is something else you could perceive uv light or infrared light it would be something else so the thing is you are perceiving something Uh, where there is an immense contribution of your equipment it is not the thing in itself this is okay for objects because an object is nothing but you know a suggestion with name and form and function superimposed on it but when it comes to self there is no mediating factor isn't it hmm? so you can only know it swarupa lakshana you require you can only know it by being it because you are actually closing the senses shutting down the vrittis of the mind and seeing see in this yeah, here i have tried all these experiments okay here when it's completely silent and still in the very early hours of the morning you can try this you just feel the stillness sit erect feel the stillness and ask yourself who is perceiving the stillness who is it who seeing this utter calmness 
you will come to awareness. There is no other way. The Omkar Upasana which we are discussing now, you just in that stillness repeat Om 10 times. If you come to the full 10th time, which means every repetition of Om you have heard completely, the 10th Om will put you into the state of pure awareness. Because you have felt that, that long stretched out Om 10 times without any distraction. When your attention is riveted like this, since attention is a function of awareness, your awareness will come into full bloom. You will become completely aware at that moment. You will understand what they are trying to say. So any te such technique will lead you there. Just do avastha tray which are when you get up in that Brahma Murta, you will come to some understanding of the self. See for one who really wants to know, anything will usher you into that state. And if the mind is preoccupied with other things, then the, yes, you simply miss out life. <laughs> you miss life. <laughs> you won't stay in the moment. You are brooding over something and you are in, in the world of your own creation, you know. It is called Jiva Srishti. It is not Ishwar Srishti. For Ishwar Srishti to be experienced, you must still yourself. You must put down the stupid mind. Because the nature of the mind is to keep on moving. It is the unmoving mind that reveals awareness. So try these techniques here. This is the place to do all this. And it will make a lot of sense what we are studying. So let us go into the next mantra. which is describing the pragna and its connection with Om. Sushup, 11th mantra that is Sushupta sthana pragnyo makara stritiya matra mitera piterva minotiha minotihava idam sarvam apitisha bhavati ya evam veda. See, uh, let us get the words clear. Sushupta sthana which means the state of sushupti, state of deep sleep and pragna, you know it is the deep sleeper who is being addressed, there is a generic name for all deep sleepers. So you do not have a particular individual name in that state, is not it? So you are called the pragna and then makara tritiya matra, the third letter is of om is ma or am. And that is what, this is the analogy here that because of measuring, mite, miti means to measure. Uh, so what they are meaning to say is, Vishwa and Taijasa are as it were measurable quantities before the pragna because they come and dissolve into the pragna, isn't it? Huh? Pragna is the point of dissolution of both the waker and the dreamer. It is your own everyday experience. You have no identity in deep sleep. So it is pragna is the point of dissolution and again origination. From the pragna again arises the waker in the morning. See, apiteva means absorption, because of absorption into the pragna. The vishwa and taijasa get merged into the pragna. So the meaning actually is pragna with his fear of activity in the sleep state is ma, the third letter of om, because of measuring or because of absorption. Anyone who knows thus measures all this and he becomes the place of absorption. So you see the, the value of knowledge they are giving us. When you understand the pragna in the first person, not by going into the state of deep sleep, which means when your awareness has awakened to the extent that you are able to see what the pragna does. Not as an inference, I told you the fact that I perceive the blankness of deep sleep, it is not an inference. See this is the point to note. 
in the study of Sushupti here, please note this is the very important point. You are experiencing it in the first person for the study. Not as the sleeper inferring the state after he gets up. So, this level of awareness has to be manufactured for avastatra which are to work. All yogis aim at this. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is there, no? Ya Nisha Sarva Bhutanam Tasyam Jagarti Sayami. Ya Nisha Sarva Bhutani uh, Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani Sa Nisha Pashyato Muni. Which means that which is night for all beings is day for the yogi and that which is day for all beings that becomes night for the yogi. His levels of awareness have enhanced through all these techniques. Then only it is possible to study the deep sleeper, the pragna in the first person and not as an inference through the sleep process and after you wake up, not like that. So, it is an experience. See this uh, actually this point is there in the commentaries where you know this is the um, question posed for Advait Vedanta by Sankhya Vadins that you are drawing an inference of the deep sleep state when you do this avasthatray. Then uh, the Puropaksha, the, the, uh, he counteracts it, Shankara counteracts it by saying that um, no, this is experiential. For the yogi, it is experiential. It is not an in inference he is drawing. So, it is showing us the level of awareness you must already awaken in order to make avastha tray which are work for you. So, do not miss out this essential point. Otherwise, it will be an intellectual study skimming through the surface of your awareness. It is not that. Avasatra which are is the technique to go into self-knowledge. For that, you must do it like that then with an awakened mind and intellect so that your deep sleep state also is an object of your perception. <laughs> it is a very big thing. It is all to do with awareness. Also, goes into what state? Sushupti so, so, so like state. Yes, see the, the similarity between meditative state and Sushupti is both places the senses are closed mm -hmm. and the conscious mind which is always uh, running behind thoughts that is put down. Mm -hmm. But only thing is in deep sleep of the, the ordinary person, not of this mm -hmm. kind. Mm -hmm. There the uh, person is not aware of what is happening? He is sort of deep in a swoon like state, but he perceives blankness. Mm. Hmm? What they are telling us is you do this consciously. Mm. Like in meditation, as you said, in meditation, what do you do? You consciously put down thoughts because meditation is aimed at the full blossoming of awareness. Mm. See, the Yoga Sutras are very clear on this. You know, the f first four sutras of the Yoga Sutras, the first is Atha Yoga Anushasanam, uh, that this is, now we are going to begin the study of Yoga. The second is Yoga Stu Chitta Vritti Nirodh, which means Yoga means putting down the thought modifications, cessation of the thought modifications of the mind is called Yoga, not all the twisting and twirling that we do. That is just an aid to this state where your thought modifications can be arrested, to what effect? Tada drashta swarupe avasthanam, so that the witnessing consciousness, the witness of the thoughts resolves into its original state. And if you do not achieve this, what will happen? Vritti sarupyam itaratra, that is the fourth sutra, which means to say if you do not achieve this state of resolving the witness back to his source, then you will be carried away by the vrittis. That is why yoga, to stop that, you have to awaken the higher consciousness by putting down the thought process. The first four sutras are giving you the essence, isn't it? You intensify this, you will go into samadhi. Then all the other descriptions are there. But the first four sutras are telling you what is to be aimed at in the practice of yoga. So, this is what you see. That is why here, through the meditative process, if you can generate higher awareness, it will remain the witness of even the deep sleep state. In the writings of uh, many commentators, you get a glimpse of this. 
that the awareness they are talking of is not the awareness of the ordinary deep sleeper. It is the it is higher level awareness which has become the witness of the deep sleep state. So you are able to conduct our so it is not inferential, it is experiential the state itself. So you are able to conduct avasthatra which are by by comparing all of these. So are you getting the point? Hmm? It is measuring his vichar in that sense. Yes, yes, in that sense. Measuring and the place of absorption also. Hmm? All identities get dissolved in the pragna. Hmm? So actually, there are a whole lot of people who are comparing sleep and meditation. And as you as you said, no, it's like a joke. I set my alarm uh, when I go to meditate. So you must never confuse these states. Meditation is not at all like sleep in its effects. Okay, in, in the preparation, yes, you are putting down the senses and the mind, but so that your awareness is, comes to the forefront. If that has not happened, how different is it from sleep? So, never bring, actually in practice, you must never bring in sleep during the, so that's why do meditation in a fresh state of mind. When you are completely out of the sleep mode, when you are yearning and hankering for that state, that is when, when you, all your vital energies are just bursting out, then you should practice meditation. Hmm? And yes, sab jo bolte hai na, 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 after 60, after 70, you should, don't listen to all that. <laughs> You must do it when your vitality is blooming. Mm. So then only you will understand the sheer beauty of all this, you know. This is life. So that is why uh, all this uh, understanding is drawn. The Sushupta Sthana, the, uh, the point where Sushupti begins and the deep sleeper and exactly how he becomes the place of dissolution of both the waker and the dreamer and in him is everything absorbed and at the same time he reveals the presence of the Atman because he becomes the witness of the blank state of deep sleep. So this should be entirely experienced in the first person. Let us go, go to mantra 12. Now you see very interesting, Amatra. Yes, here in this book it is on page 69. You see under Upanishad what is put? You must go there. Huh? The twelfth mantra. A matra shaturtho a vyavaharya prapanchopashama shivam advaitam eva omkara atmaiva samvishanti samvishati atmana atmanam Ya evam veda. So I have split and read it. Iti Mandukya Upanishad Samapta. They are concluding, but with a tremendous declaration. Okay. See, a matra, the partless om. No matra there. See, the final state, I told you after the chanting of a long drawn out om, the silence which you experience is the self, he is saying. Om led you to that. Hmm? That is Turiya and Avyavaharya, it is beyond all conventional transactional dealings, isn't it? Can you use the self for anything? <laughs> it is because of the self that all your deals are being made, okay. It is providing the energy, the activation of everything, but by itself it cannot be used for anything. Avyavaharya, not in this transactional world. Prapanchopashama, where the, the universe, the phenomenal universe as we see it dissolves, obviously. Hmm? Shivam, see this is the, exactly the description of Turiya which they gave in the seventh mantra. Turiyam, ah, sorry, Shivam, it is ever auspicious. Hmm? Advaitam, it is non-dual. Any differentiation in that state? See, Pragna itself has no differentiation, it is a mass of consciousness. Then what to speak of Turiya? Hmm? See that is why I told you the deep sleep state. I do not have to ask you what was your deep sleep state like because mine and yours was the same. I can ask you what were your dreams like? 
what were your waking experiences like but i don't have to ask you what was your sushupti like because i experienced the same there itself we are coming to a unity then what to speak of the atman it is advaitam because it is beyond all parameters of thought beyond uh, yesterday we were discussing time space and causation all that is uh, simply wiped out in that state and there are no limits uh, you must have read about the uh, when we talk of mind that itself means limits uh, desha kala patra and uh, the causation limit all these are limits under which the mind functions now in this state of turiya you are beyond that so it is advaitam hmm? see when you are not in the time limit that itself means you are eternal isn't it hmm? if you are in time you are not eternal when you are beyond time it itself means you are timeless is does it make sense when you are not within the parameters of space it means you are everywhere obviously when you are not in the parameters of causation you are not one particular thing yes you are beyond it all so this is what advaita means you are beyond all these uh, limits which are part and parcel of your mind when the mind is put down and you have awakened completely from within you are simply beyond time beyond space beyond causation so you are advaita you are one with all eva omkara atmaiva this is that om om is the sound symbol of this self and he who knows this atmana atmanam ya evam veda samvishati he enters the self through the self the first self is capital s and the second self is what you thought yourself to be <laughs> he enters into self knowledge so to know the turiya is the whole point to know the invariable underlying all variables in fact you know how much we are yearning for this when you clear your mind you will understand you will your yearning only for this but you thought that uh, some some object would satisfy you it's a it's a mistake in our thinking you know adhyas is such an interesting phenomenon it puts the entire onus on you and on your mind your thinking faculty it is not due to some interference of god or some planetary influence or something that you are thinking wrongly it is because your sense of identity got invested in the body mind and outer objects that it led to an understanding which told you if i bring this more into my life i'll be happy if i brought that more into my life i'll be happy so the entire life is about then collecting all of this so this adhyas is characteristic of an error in the mind buddhi it starts uh, functioning like that many of these youngsters you know in these iits and all they have asked me this uh, ma what exactly am i seeking i want to know my mind tells me well it's money just now it's money huh? and your dream job and your dream home but after that uh, suppose i i get all this still i will be asking what more so what exactly are we seeking the level of fulfillment we are seeking uh, it is not at all in any way proportional to any of these but the mind tells us this due to adhyas so this is what is called ignorance uh, avidya agnyan hmm? it is the root cause for the kleshas all our problems are due to that so when you have this adhyas you naturally have desire due to desire love hate good bad and due to all of these different emotions in the mind shudripus all of these see this is the whole sequence of our life so you are constantly chasing this until you feel i must put an end to this and this adhyas is in the mind only so bondage is in the mind liberation is in the mind the soul is ever liberated 
Buddha used to say this, you know, your own flawless, unalloyed, transparent, pristine state of awareness is the self, is you. He didn't use the word Atman, but that is your real state. And after this, he would keep quiet, just like this, you know, Omkaru Pasna. You give it a name, you don't give it a name. You give it some form, don't give it a form. Do whatever you want. You get the idea by the experience. That's the whole point. So, by meditation, we can arrive at a pragna-like state. Yes. And, but not Turiya. Didi, Turiya is an opening into pure consciousness by itself. It doesn't require... You know, that is why Ithakur used to say, uh, if there is the grace of God, just like that it will happen. I can't tell you by this method it will happen. No, no, but with our effort, we can yes. aim to reach... Yes, Pragna, definitely. The, the, the insight which gives you this avasthatre, which are the culmination of that, you will achieve by meditation. See, actually speaking, there are two schools of Vedanta, Advait Vedanta. One is called the Vivarana school and one is the Bhamati school. Vivarana school insists on inquiry as the means. And it will say that alone is enough. You do a pointed inquiry, you will reach there. Hmm? And But Bhamati school will insist on meditation as the means. So these are two schools. Without meditation, you cannot bring yourself to that level of awareness. That's the Vajaspati Mishra school, is Bhamati school. So, the essential thing is use anything which appeals to you. What appeals to you is your path. The strong appeal which just inquiry might hold or meditation might hold. Or you combine the two also. In fact, most people combine the two. Because inquiry is also possible when you have a mind like that. No? Obviously. And the beauty of Yoga Sutras is See, they are two different philosophical systems, okay. Vedanta is different from yoga philosophically, but it helps you psychologically because it is giving you such information about your mind and since bondage is in the mind, you can use all that information to overcome the bondage. Like the Klesha, mm. the Ashtang Yoga, the Sanyama mm. and uh, Dhyan Dharana Samadhi and you see Sri Ramakrishna is very clear in the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. That merely through reasoning you will not get this knowledge unless you are established in Samadhi. He has said this in the gospel. Which means the transcendental knowledge requires a very stable mind. Samadhi like state for it to become established. And you can't like dismiss this because just try it through reasoning. Try it and see. Just the inquiry you try and see. So that's why that's when you know you need meditation. So, we must follow this path. You see, actually the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna gives you the most tremendous insights into all this. And also the means to it. Like he always insisted as long as there is woman and gold in the mind. We have been reading it, isn't it, in the night part. As long as your thought itself is deflected by desire, there won't be any question of error. Because your awareness is behind the thought process, isn't it? Unless you arrest the thought for long periods of time, you won't get it. So, if your mind is over busy with objects of desire, how on earth will you come to this? So, the starting is from there. A general period of purification so that the mind learns to rise to rarefied states of transparency and awareness. And then this inquiry becomes possible, meditation becomes spontaneous. Then it's you are just enjoying the pension, you know, as Thakur used to say. You will be in perpetual bliss. Because you trained yourself like that. Otherwise, you know, you are only following some stupid thought process which you borrowed from somewhere, someone, some media thing. And if, when you crash after following that, then you realize, Are, what was I doing, wasting my time? Are you getting it? Hmm? In these uh, places, you can clearly understand these things. The mind will take us for a ride until we take it into our hands. But can the mind same 
time working to the objective world with equal concentration, whatever it is, and, and to the subjective world mm. for the spirituality, it is difficult. I don't think so. Because let's say somebody is doing a PhD. Yeah. And there's a fierce competition for him to yeah. go excel. To yeah. excel. Mm. And over the time, he's so much into the objective world. So after 10, 15 years, his mind is so conditioned for them to come back and believe in this is very difficult. What I feel is uh, the focus and the desireless state of mind which you get through the meditative practice intensifies your levels of attention and all that very much because awareness is again being invested. So, that mind will succeed anywhere. What you will lose is out of my PhD I will achieve this, 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 this. This is what I want to do. Uh, the, the desires associated with whatever you are aiming at, you will lose on that. You will understand that whether I have that that dream car or not, I can be happy. So, you may lose on the dream car, but anything which involves focus and concentration, you will not lose on that. I have seen this in my own life. <laughs> you know, you become very, you become an intense person. A yogi can achieve anything anywhere, but you will lose on uh, objects to satisfy you, which is a you know, a perfectly a thing which you will simply love because then you don't have this these equations that I will require so many things to keep me happy. So, isn't that a covetable state? When I can say I don't require so many things to keep me happy, just the bare basics and necessities of life, that's enough. So, you may lose on that, that is quite possible. So, that's perfectly all right, I think. After all, all of us want uh, a, a really good life where your sense of values and where your satisfactions come more from within you, isn't it? So, I think this is perfectly acceptable. These uh, students, they ask me, Mataji, this will turn the wheel of ec economy around <laughs> because uh, economy is about consumerism <laughs> and this state of mind will uh, harm the economy. So, I told them, see, you must bring into your life all that you need for your life. Uh, the, the renunciation which the scriptures are speaking of, it has a purpose. You achieve a state of mind where you are satisfied with little and taste it. Then you will know never will frustration and depression and sorrow, this existential sorrow ever touch you. Then you bring in things into your life. Enough for, for a need, need not for greed. So, you will live with a very positive mindset I think. Then you bring things into your life, you bring all uh, all that the life world has to offer, what does it matter? So, not that it will, in fact you know when the economy is harmed, when it is in the hands of middlemen who are themselves unsatisfied. Because it is not the, the creation of goods that is hampered, but the distribution of goods, isn't it? After industrialization, this is what was seen. So, this uh, turns the wheel of economy backward. So, this tendency will go, isn't it, with self-knowledge. Hmm? The need to hoard, the need to exploit, all this will be overcome. All this will go. The need towards being greedy and that is that natural, renunciation. natural renunciation it will be. But you must taste the highest reaches of your consciousness. That is what human life is about. Otherwise, you will remain unsatisfied. Ye jo aur kya hai jivan mein, this will not leave you even in old age. <laughs> so, you better uh, learn, learn it early. Just put one question to yourself. Hmm. Why did you take birth? Yes. Just think on that question. Yes. Why did you take birth? Exactly. Just to taste all this mm. and keep coming back, keep tasting, mm. <laughs> mm. keep tasting it, keep coming back, mm. no problem. Mm. No, this uh, understanding is so natural, Didi, it does not have to be taught, mm. you know, because uh, though the students also have asked this, uh, Mataji, I know I am chasing something which I do not want. Mm. 
but I can't stop it because uh, it's like a momentum I have generated because my mind did not do yoga. It did not derive th these uh, levels of satisfaction. So it is chasing something which it believes, but I know very well it has such a, a sorrowful end that, uh, but I can't stop this momentum now. They say this. So I incentive salience is based on this, you know. Because they are seeing in the world so many people mm. who have achieved are yet not happy. Who, who is really happy? You stand on the corner of mm. the street, <laughs> any street. And just watch and see the faces of people and you'll see how many are really happy with life. And some are happy with so little. That mm -hmm. also you mm -hmm. see. So yeah, little yeah. they are happy with. In fact, if you bring one extra thing into their life, they feel uncomfortable. Such type also is there. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, happiness is a state of mind. Mm -hmm. And if the mind is over cluttered, how can you be happy? Even an overcluttered room, you want to get out of it. Mm. And if the mind is like that, no space for awareness, mm. no space for um, uh, good thoughts and feelings, uh, constant impinging of conditioned thought processes, and rag, dvesh, all this abounding there, how can you be happy? <laughs> In the, in the process of sadhana, yes, you may ask for isolation and, but the, that is not, uh, see, we are not running away from people or things because, well, they will impede our progress or anything like that. In the time of sadhana, it is required to ke keep the mind in a particular state to be convinced of all these things in the first person. So that I think is permitted, isn't it? Each one of us need, needs our uh, times. Mm -hmm. See, in places like this, how much, how happy you feel? Hmm? It is just being given a different name now, me time. Me time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> me time, yeah. So everybody feels the need for mm -hmm. isolation, mm -hmm. but they call it something else. Yeah. To me, it's also meditation. To me, time. Meditation yeah, time. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, all over the world, the same human needs, you know, the same thing is there. Really, I had one technical question that have they measured that in sleep is the sense of time in normal sleep? Hmm. Sense of time is there or not? It's lost. It is lost. That's why when you get up in the morning, you don't know whether you slept two hours or four hours or six hours. Yeah. Only the clock will tell you. Why is it lost? Because time is an aspect of your mind. When mind was shut down, you lost sense of time. This itself shows, you see, we don't have to go to any scripture. Your, it does not require Vedant to tell you you are conscious, is not it? To tell you that time, space and causation is in your mind because your sleep state itself shows it. You must just look at things from within. And your own experiences. Actually, Vedanta is about that. What it is talking of is already there. You just have to turn your mind towards it. I told you, you no. Know, pockets of awareness are created even in deep sleep. So, because of the yearning to get up at four, you get up a little before four and find out if it's yeah, so time. That is, that is what is telling me that there is somebody who is keeping track that you have to get up. <laughs> see, <Somebody's getting laughs> see. That's why I told you the scriptures are meant to like, you know, confirm your experience and not bring the experience into you. So it's your own experience what Vedanta is saying. You're, you're right. Body keeps track of time. Mind keeps track of time. When you these two are arrested, well, your sense of time goes. That's why then the, the real you is wanting to know. So it gets up. Awareness comes into. <laughs> so many people have just taken the question, who am I? And just pursued it. So, the and error is same. 
yes, error of your buddhi, it is an existential error. It is not like a, an error in mathematics. It is an existential error so inbuilt that uh, we do not understand we are functioning through that error. You are in maya, so you cannot ask how maya works. So, how adhyas works you cannot ask, ask for that. So, when we say ignorance sin? Yes, it is a generic term again ignorance. It means all forms of error. Adhyas is a more technical concept. Um, Matlab, uh, we know of Adhyas and Maya has two uh, powers, yes. power and shakti and so yes, big shape. Shakti, but yes. Adhyas is some total of both sort of. Yes, Adhyas is fundamentally, fundamental error in identification. Okay. Hmm? We identify with something which we are not. And what we truly are, we are totally disidentified from that. And this is happening all the time with us. So, Adhyas is connected to all the superimposition. Adhyas is superimposition theory, yeah. And those are connected to the body mind complex. Yes, yes. You know, there was a absent minded professor who uh, used to daily go for a walk with his walking stick. And he would come back home and put his, uh, hang his walking stick on a hanger and go and rest on his cot. So, one day he came, <laughs> put his walking stick on, <laughs> on the cot and went and hung his shirt on the hanger. The idea is this, he has mistaken himself for the stick. We have mistaken ourselves to be body and mind. Although in our own experience just now, this is an object of perception and this is not self-aware, I am self-aware and it is always that the body is mine, that is my experience but not me because it never becomes aware of me, I become aware of it. Although these are all always in our experience, we, we somehow we think I am the body. And I was reading your book that example is so good in which you say, when I have a pain, I mean, mm. because I am a doctor, I identify, mm. I do not know where the pain is. One yeah. machine has to tell me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It is my body, but you, you won't know, yeah. You cannot localize pain in the body, which means it is not self conscious, no? How will you localize? <laughs> like this, there are so many clues scattered in our everyday experience to show, but the adhyas is so strong. Yeah does not allow us to see this. Mm. Otherwise, these are all uh, like you can call them pointers or mm. clues to the knowledge of the self. But only if you are conscious. Yeah, if you are, yeah. Look in the right yeah. Mm. In fact, how we are, you know, like a, a small child, uh, if he trips and falls, uh, he is okay until his mother is around. If the mother comes, he will start uh, screaming and throwing tantrums because then he wants to be petted and <laughs> so we are also somewhat like that. We know very well, uh, see when you are somewhere alone and maybe you have some pain, you will bear it stoically, you know, and you will see it as an object. But yes, when you have sympathizers around you, <laughs> it is the nature of the mind. Pain also is an object of your perception, but you can be in pain out of choice. It, this is a fact with every experience actually. Like, that is like yeah, we mix up. Uh, one of the definitions of Adhyasa is Satya Anrita Mithuni Karanam Adhyasa, which means the truth and untruth have got mixed up. Isn't it a beautiful definition? That uh, superimposition theory, you know, that actually you should keep thinking of these things mm. to change your experience of life. See, in that uh, actual superimposition story which is given, uh, now there is a, actually a rope, but it is uh, semi dark. Mm. So, you think it is a snake and you fear you may get a stick, you may do a, all sorts of things because you think it is a snake. Nothing more than that, the problem is only there. And the remedy is you throw more light on the matter. 
the light of your awareness, if you awaken that, you will understand how Adhyas works. And it can be pretty strong. See, even people like uh, Sri Ramakrishna, they showed, okay, but they were in a state very different. Uh, Sri Ramakrishna had, towards the end of his life, he had throat cancer, which is a very painful form of cancer. And it would, uh, he would cough, he would show it in so many ways, the pain, and everybody would feel so bad when they saw him. One day, Turiyananji Maharaj was close to him, and yeah, and he said, uh, well, you are well. And then Sri Ramakrishna said, but I have this pain, I'm, yes, but I see you full of bliss, even in the midst of all this. And he said, ah, Sala, he has found me out. <laughs> So, the, it can't touch their inner being. But the manifestation may be there. Like he used to even pray to mother, mother cure me of this disease. And once he had broken his uh, hand, uh, the bone here, and then he prayed for that also. It pains mother, please cure me of this. So, they may show that, that manifestation. But deep within them, there is such an ocean of calmness and bliss. They, they can't, it, that also gets, they unravel it even in such experiences. Even in the Buddha's life, there is such stunning incidents are there, where he would move about uh, for a radius of almost two miles, people could know he is around. By the sheer peace, he radiated. And Sri Ramakrishna's Bhav Samadhi, you please read it in the either the great master or Sri Ramakrishna and his divine play, the new book. It is really, everyone would catch it like fire, you know. When he went into Bhav Samadhi, they all became like a mob of, almost like drunk people, you know. All would catch that Bhav Samadhi, the feel of it. And then they would sing and dance and like a mob of crazy people, it would appear like that. They are all in touch with the Supreme at that moment. Sri Ramakrishna and his divine play Asana. by Swami Chetanananda. Yeah, the English has changed. It's very beautiful. Like you won't put it down. <laughs> and even on Mother Didi, Sri Sharda Devi and her divine play. Both are the biographies only. Mother's book also. I finished it so quickly, couldn't put it down. Yeah. So beautiful. And there are very few books on the mother. See, once mother, how mother was a Vedantin, you see. Uh, once uh, mother you had rheumatic pain. And uh, uh, she, she, one day, one devotee came into her room. And there was this uh, uh, lady called Kamini, uh, like a maid, a helper for mother. And she was uh, pressing mother's feet with medicated oil. And mother had that rheumatic pain, so she would uh, suffer some amount of pain. Then when she was uh, getting that massage done, uh, she suddenly said to that woman devotee who entered, uh, she said, see, actually the body is one thing, the mind is another thing, and the cell soul is another thing. But the soul pervades this mind and body. That is why I feel pain here. Not I have pain, okay. That's why I feel pain here. But if I disconnect the soul from this body mind, pain may be there, I won't feel it. Mother is saying this. <laughs> this is Vedanta, you see. The actual this is the actual fact. Your consciousness gets reflected in the mind and gives you mental awareness due to which you feel sensations. If you learn to block that connection, which means your mental awareness remains un, I mean your awareness remains uninvested in the mind and body, you will lose this, these sensations. So, this Omkar Upasana, let us just uh, conclude, it is about identifying the three matras, the three states with a, u, um and finally, the silence after the om is the self, the turiya. So, when you practice it, just do a long drawn out om.
like this, go on like this for some time and if you remain perfectly conscious of the tenth Om, you will see you have become intensely aware from within. That awareness is, you can say it is the nature of the self, the Atman and the gap between the Oms, that, that you must identify with that, the self, because that is the Turiya. This is Om Karupasana. In fact, Om is always going on, especially in the Himalayas, <laughs> because here everything is very clear and pure. And you just have to stop the noise in your mind to hear it. There are many saints and sages who have just used Omkar Upasana for self-knowledge. So, shall we end here? Hmm? Om Shanti 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 Peace, peace, peace.